करते हुए श्री शशि थरूर जी धन्यवाद जवाब बोले वेन यू स्पीक Then please put it. No, 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 no. Shashi Tharoor ji, a petty. Please. वो बहुत समर्थ He is very capable member of parliament. You need not to support him. Please, Shashi Tharoor sir. Shashi Tharoor ji, you sir, ask anything from the minister only. It was the intervention only. Yes, please, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I, though, though, as you can see, we are surprised ji, ji, ji. that a cabinet minister. And please be brief. On you can uh, sir, speak for hours. Give us half the time that he, yeah, yeah, he took, sir. That the okay. minister took. I just want to say that, in fact, though we are a bit surprised to see a cabinet minister speaking on a subject that is no longer his portfolio, it's nonetheless he has said a lot of things that I'm very happy to agree with. In fact, uh, ships carry 90% of the world's goods across the globe, and in fact, in India's case, it's even more because 95% of the uh, uh, volume of cargo that comes to our country comes by shipping, not by any other means. 68% of the value too. So, for us. ports are important we have this wonderful coastline one of the most impressive coastlines of the world and we should have by rights devel developed our ports in a very significant way which i'm sorry to say he is right we have not yet done so but i have to ask in that case why is it that the ministry has con continuously underutilized the resources that were given to it by this parliament year after year after 2017 18 we're seeing underutilization of resources now so i do want to say that despite India's economic growth and all the prospects. The vast majority of the container ships coming to India, sir, we are not getting them here because our ports aren't good enough. They're being transshipped outside the country, mainly at Colombo in Sri Lanka, Singapore, Port Klang, Tanjung Pelapas in Malaysia, Salalah in Oman, Jebel Ali in Dubai, that we've all talked uh, talked about elsewhere. And the problem is our country lacks a major all-weather deep water port near the international sea routes to handle large mainline. container vessels this is also given china a tremendous dominance sir, in the indian ocean we have a situation where colombo today is transshipping more indian goods indian goods goods for india than any of india's major ports in fact all of india's major ports put together are not matching colombo now what's worrying me about this is that it, there's a serious geo strategic angle for us being dependent upon colombo for such a large portion of our goods because it is after all a port in which the chinese are extremely active a chinese firm has just been awarded the eastern container terminal at the colombo port and we are in the pickwin situation that india prohibits chinese firms from investing in or building our ports but in effect we are condoning the transshipment of the lion's share of our cargo via a port operated exclusively by china until recently and where Chinese navy vessels and submarines were regularly calling for resupply is this entirely wise sir for a country like india i do want to point out that on top of that there is a particular challenge because increasingly shipping is growing bigger there is ships of over 20000 teus are the future of sea cargo because they involve lower costs per container shipped but bigger ships require deeper ports and this in our case has to be unfortunately extremely expensively created through dredging because of the very high logistics costs involved the major shipping lines are not stopping in our ports there is lack of a significant domestic transshipment port even though we have 7516 kilometers of coastline nearly 200 ports even our so called 13 major ports have a depth of only between 9 to 11 meters far from the 20 that modern shipping requires now this in effect means that our economy is helping to pay for foreign ports like colombo salala tanjung pelapas and so on while our exports remain relatively uncompetitive our imports become more expensive entirely because of our lack of a deep water transshipment terminal so this is where my constituency has the answer <coughs> the vinyam port is an amazing place because it is right near the international shipping lines it is a port which has extremely decent connections which can be improved by the government it has a natural deep draft of 20 to 24 meters so we don't need to spend money dredging plus. uh mr mandavi talked about selling the sand from dredging but the sand will not fetch the price the cost yeah but mud and on top of that it costs much much more to dredge than to sell 
So the problem is that despite what he said, our real need, sir, is to actually avoid the dredging, and William provides the answer to that. We have the, the geological features that contribute towards preventing exp excessive spending on dredging operations because we actually have the minimal littoral drift, the depth itself, the turning radius, all that we need. Now, what I wanted to say to you, sir, uh, Mr. Chairman, is that given that the 21st century ports require longer terminals, deeper drafts, and bigger turning basins, we have an answer in my constituency. To my surprise, the government has so far not yet acceded to our recommendation to declare William as a major port. In fact, it should be the major port in the country instead of continuing to be a minor port under state government jurisdiction. I wanted to say in particular that given the fact that we have all these challenges, for us to take a port which offers all of this on top of that minimal operating and maintenance costs and on top of that, the, the ability to deploy best-in-class equipment that's being built from scratch right now without being burdened by legacy facilities, even though it was a port in the days of the Roman Empire. Today, it has essentially been neglected for such, such a long time. We're building a wholly new 21st century port. It seems to me we will have, for the first time in India, a port that has the capability to handle the largest ships in the world as efficiently as Singapore, Hong Kong, or Rotterdam for decades to come. For this reason, sir, I have a few specific recommendations please, to the minister. Please. Number one, I urge the minister to declare William as a major port. This is not a very difficult challenge. But the obvious facts speak for themselves. Number two, sir, the construction has been going rather slowly because obviously the state central government is not involved. Uh, and we had a cyclone, Oki, and so on, which delayed construction, many problems. Anything that can be done by the central government to facilitate the development of the hinterland area of the Virginian port would strengthen the supply chain of shippers and logistics service providers, promote interaction with consumers, and enhance the port-related services, including the cruise ships that Mansuk Mandavia spoke about a minute ago. In addition, we need the central government to declare Virginian as a special economic zone in order to enhance the economic capacity and the operations of the port. Third, there's now talk of restoring the decades-old cabotage rules. Bad idea, sir. The fact is that the government must continue to provide relaxations under the cabotage law to promote free trade and encourage economic activity at major transshipment hubs in India. Who are we, who are we protecting, sir? No Indian company has 20,000 TEU ships. Let us not make a cabotage into an obstacle for our own development. And I do want to say, sir, that there is a further problem which, uh, when you had clubbed all the no, topics no together, conclude. When, I, I, when you had clubbed all the topics together, I was going to mention it because Mr. Gadkari knows we have a national highway from Virinim all the way to Tamil Nadu that's supposed to carry on to Kanyakumari. It is almost finished up the Tamil Nadu border, but nothing is happening on the other side of the border. And we urge the government to really crack the whip and ensure that the road carries on all the way to Kanyakumari. So it's the national interest I'm talking about. I've only taken one-fourth okay, of the okay, time but, of the but previous speaker. There is time limit. Finally, yeah. sir, in inland waterways, I want to support my colleague, Mr. Thomas Chaikaran. We really need inland waterways very seriously, and the Ananta Victoria Marthandam Canal would be an excellent way of opening up the connectivity to Virginia Port as well. I certainly want to support that. Then, there is the equal concern that the Ministry for Inland Waterways has also had a shocking underutilization of funds sanctioned last year. You know they only spent 20 crores out of 250 crores allocated, sir. So when we are talking about demands for grants, we want them to spend the grants they get. And I would urge the Minister to ensure Gee, that he you. remedies the underutilization of funds in both his key ministries. Thank Finally, you. I mentioned in Parliament during a question hour that there are some very important legal instruments internationally that India is overdue in ratifying. I hope that he will do that. I also want to stress that there has to be a new legislative framework for the port sector, the Indian Ports, Major Ports Act, the Indian Vessel Act, and so on. The government has to absolutely modernize them. There will be a number of concerns Shri... expressed. And I would urge, urge, sir, that the minister treat this matter with a vision to make India a land of major okay. ports of great significance. Look, this is a big thing about the Sagar. The Sagar is a big thing about the Sagar. Please do that. Thank you. Danishali Ji.